After journeying to explore the stunning Antisano volcano and its surroundings, we realize that our adventure has only just begun. Ecuador boasts numerous areas of great beauty, many of which remain alarmingly unprotected. Without prompt action, these wonders will vanish before future generations get a chance to witness them. Prepare to delve into the wonder of a relatively little-known corner of Ecuador, where we will uncover the beauty and fragility of one of the world's most biodiverse regions. Join us as we explore mysterious forests, water bodies teeming with life, and come face to face with fascinating species of birds and other living beings. We will also speak of what is threatening this richness and how we can safeguard it for generations to come. Welcome to the Ecuadorian Choco. Just an hour and a half from the city of Quito, heading northwest, we find ourselves amidst lush, misty forests. Only 30 years ago, the Ecuadorian Choco's forests were virtually untouched. This region of Ecuador is one of the most biodiverse in the country and the world, and it is also home to over 250 human groups that include Afro-Ecuadorian, indigenous and mixed-race communities. The Choco is shared between Ecuador and Colombia and is often associated with the Magdalena and Tumbes regions. The mountains trap the moist air coming from the coast, enabling the survival of tropical rainforests and pre-montane wet forests. While these may seem mysterious to many of us, they play a crucial role in climate regulation and serve as the habitat for thousands of species. The Ecuadorian Choco lies to the northwest of the country, between the provinces of Esmeraldas, the western foothills of Carchi, Imbabure, and a part of Pichincha. It is believed that the Choco harbors around 9,000 plant species, of which approximately 25% are endemic, meaning they are only found in this region. Each hectare of forest in this region can absorb 250 tonnes of carbon, contributing to the renewal of the air we breathe. The Choco is also a source of water. The forest provides this vital ecosystem service for the habitat and survival of plants and animals, along with that of the people who live there as a source of drinking water, irrigation and electricity generation. Rivers, lakes and waterfalls enhance the Choco's unique biological diversity. This biodiversity is exemplified by birds. The Ecuadorian Choco holds the highest bird endemism in the entire American continent. Birds, including migratory species, find their home in this habitat, boasting around 830 species, of which 85 are endemic. Our visit gave us the extraordinary opportunity to observe hummingbirds, possibly the most abundant and colorful of groups. These tiny birds present bright, sometimes iridescent colors, 
Their beaks are often long and vary among species in function of their feeding habits. Clinging to a tree with a greyish-brown trunk, almost imperceptible, is a choco tabaculo. A relatively common species, this small bird is still challenging to spot due to its ability to camouflage itself among low tree trunks. Not far away, we hear an unfamiliar call, the choco toucan. This species inhabits the humid forests of eastern Panama, western Colombia and northwestern Ecuador. Its plumage is mostly black with a white or yellow bib. This beautiful bird feeds on fruits, ants, other insects and small animals. Dawn breaks, and we encounter the Rufus Motmot, a species found in human forest up to an altitude of 1,400 meters. It feeds on various fruits, especially palms and plantains, as well as insects, spiders, lizards, frogs, fish, crabs, and even small mammals like bats. According to local inhabitants, a large number of Coco the Rock are to be found just a few minutes walk off the road. With some skepticism, we decide to take a look. We wait. Our patience is rewarded. First one, then two, and as time passes, more and more. The Coco the Rock is an endemic species of the Choco, ranging from western Colombia through the Esmeraldas province of Ecuador to northwest Pichincha. Its name reflects its habitat, deep, humid ravines where it builds its nest and raises its young. Males typically gather in leks to find mates, forming large groups in conspicuous locations to showcase themselves, much like a fashion runway. The duller colored females carefully observe and finally choose as their mate the male with the most striking plumage color, the best dance moves and the sweetest songs. When a male earns a female's favor, she descends to where he is perched and carefully looks him over to decide if he is a good candidate to father her offspring. Turning away from the spectacle offered by the cock of the rock lek, we notice in the distance a brightly colored bird, the golden-headed quetzal. This extraordinary species is renowned for its stunning iridescent plumage. Males stand out with a greenish golden sheen on their wings and chest, which depending on the light may appear blue. As their name suggests, their heads exhibit a distinctive golden glow. Females, however, have a brownish tone and lack the dazzling iridescent hues of their male counterparts. The rufous-breasted ant thrush has a greyish-brown body, a black throat and a dark reddish head and chest. This species is found in the humid subtropical or tropical montane forests of Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Panama, Peru and Venezuela. A forager on the forest floor it can be immediately recognized for its stocky build and a short raised tail. The mysterious and elusive ant pitter of the Ecuadorian Choco is an emblematic species of the region. Ant pitters inhabit the middle and upper parts of cloud forests 
and they reveal their presence through distinctive songs and calls. These ground-dwelling birds are adept at camouflage, an adaptation to the dense understory, and they play a vital role in the ecology of the area. A resplendent blue-winged mountain tanager, with its blue wings, offers a vibrant display of colours amid the branches. The golden tanager symbolises the richness of the local avifauna, adding a vibrant brushstroke to the forest canopy and highlighting the importance of conservation in this fragile ecosystem. Another Ecuadorian choco toucan, the collared arasari, captured our attention with its striking bill and vivid plumage. A lesser known species, its presence serves as a reminder of the surprising bird diversity in this region. The black-cheeked woodpecker is an elusive creature that leaves barely a trace. However, its ecological role making holes in tree trunks contributes to ecosystem health, creating cavities that other animals can use for nesting and shelter. Locally dubbed the Jumbo of the New World Barbet family, the Toucan Barbet is a characteristic inhabitant of the transitional zones between the low and middle elevations of the Ecuadorian Chocó. But the Ecuadorian Choco is not just about birds. The region also teems with many species of mammals. Dense vegetation and flowing rivers conceal astonishing creatures that evoke admiration and wonder. Once again, the animal kingdom unveils its diversity. Until the mid 20th century, the lowland areas now known as the Andean Choco were within the historical range of the largest feline in the Americas, the jaguar. It is the largest and most powerful feline on the American continent, its imposing presence and spotted fur making it a majestic spectacle. Males are typically larger than females, with a total length, including the tail, ranging from 1.7 to 2.7 meters, and a weight varying between 60 and 120 kilos. Their diet consists mainly of mammals such as peccaries, tapirs, deer and monkeys, but they also hunt birds, reptiles and fish. In recent decades, extensive loss and fragmentation of forests Hunting, primarily due to conflicts with local communities and a decline in their natural prey, have led to the critically endangered status of the western jaguar population. Among the trees lives the ocelot, a small felid locally known as a tiger cat for its agility and beautiful coat. The ocelot is an expert hunter, pursuing birds, rodents and small mammals. Despite being smaller than its larger relatives, its role in the ecosystem is equally crucial. Towards the foothills of the Andes dwells the puma, another of the region's large felines. Also known as a mountain lion, it stealthily prowls through the dense forest of the Chocó. Although it stays in the shadows and avoids contact with humans, its presence is essential for controlling herbivore populations and maintaining the balance of the food chain. Spectacled bears are large mammals, and it is believed that there are at least 40 of them in this region. Local people mention that the presence of bears is an indicator of good forest quality. 
While they primarily eat plants, they also feed on small animals. Bears are solitary animals. However, they are occasionally seen in small groups, such as mothers with their cubs. The agouti is an endearing creature that inhabits the humid forests of the Choco. Somewhat resembling a cross between a rabbit and a large rat, it boasts a silky, glossy coat. The agouti is elusive and shy, making it a challenge to spot. Despite its nocturnal habit, it can also be active during the day, remaining vigilant to avoid predators. These vegetarian animals feed on leaves, fruits, seeds and other vegetation in their natural habitat. Crucially, they play a significant role in the ecosystem by dispersing the seeds of the plants they consume, contributing to the region's biodiversity. For centuries, Yaguti has been intertwined with the culture and traditions of the local communities. In the past, its meat was hunted for human consumption and its skin was used to craft clothing and other items. As night falls, a movement attracts our attention in a canopy. An opossum, Darby's woolly opossum to be exact. This nocturnal, arboreal marsupial feeds on a variety of insects, small vertebrates, fruits, flowers, and nectar. Distributed from the western Andes of Ecuador and Colombia to Central America and Mexico, it acts as a pollinator for various plant species and builds its nests in tree hollows using dead leaves and branches. It rarely descends to the ground, preferring to forage high up in trees. Both diurnal and nocturnal, the reptiles, insects and fish of the region are among the most colourful faunal groups. In the Ecuadorian Choco, there are at least 120 species of reptiles, 45 species of lizards, iguanas and geckos, as well as more than 60 types of snake, the majority which are non-venomous. These species are quite elusive and challenging to spot, and at least five species of turtles are heavily hunted and trafficked. With its piercing gaze and distinctive spectacle-shaped band behind the eyes, the spectacle caiman is undoubtedly one of our most enigmatic finds. This medium-sized reptile stealthily glides through the rivers and lakes of the Ecuadorian Choco, hunting its prey by ambush in the darkness of the night. Its varied diet encompasses fish, birds and small mammals, and it thus plays a vital role in maintaining the balance of the aquatic ecosystems it has inhabited from time immemorial. We are lucky to spot this dipsa, a slender and elegant non-venomous snake that seems fascinated by our presence. It lingered with us for at least 20 minutes, showing no signs of fear. The boa constrictor, with its imposing stature and intricately patterned skin, is one of the largest snakes in the world, specimens reaching several meters in length. Despite its formidable reputation, the boa constrictor mainly eats mammals and birds, and plays a vital role in maintaining the natural balance of the ecosystem. It displays an astonishing capacity to adapt to varying environmental conditions. This large cockroach caught us off guard as we walked along a trail one night. Ranking among the world's largest cockroaches, this species' brown background adorned with black spots cleverly mimics the patterns of toxic beetles. It emits an unpleasant odor as an additional deterrent to potential predators. These creatures scurry rather than fly, and their flattened form allows them access to crevices that provide daytime shelter, making them imperceptible to the casual observer. This millipede brings to mind an army of soldiers with tough armor, 
perfectly camouflaged to blend in with the foliage. Millipedes are arthropods like spiders. They are not worms, despite their similarities and shared ecological functions. The most obvious difference is that millipedes have legs. Millipedes bear a greater resemblance to centipedes, but differ in that centipedes belong to a class called chylopods, which are characterized by having only one pair of limbs per segment. Additionally, millipedes are mostly herbivores, whereas centipedes tend to be carnivorous. Near the river, a massive procession marches in the forest, carrying leaves of various colors and shapes. Leafcutter ants. Similar to bees, wasps and termites, these are social insects, meaning they live in colonies where individuals are grouped into castes and perform different roles. Worker ants are commonly seen cutting leaf fragments from trees and shrubs. People often assume they eat the plants they cut, which would make them herbivores. However, this is not the case. When these small insects bring the leaf fragments into their nests, they clean, cut and crush them into a paste, not for their own consumption, but to cultivate a fungus, their primary source of food. In the deep end of a lake, created by the enduring impact of a waterfall, likely standing for over a century, we discovered a diverse assembly of small fish. While the Ecuadorian Choco boasts more than 150 species of freshwater fish, our understanding of these aquatic inhabitants and their roles remains limited. What is clear, however, is the stark decline in their population, a consequence of the heightened pollution levels inflicted upon rivers and water sources by deforestation and the detrimental practices of illegal mining. The beautiful and mysterious Ecuadorian Choco teems with biodiversity, yet it is overshadowed by multiple threats endangering this national treasure. Deforestation in the Ecuadorian Choco continues to advance ruthlessly, leaving behind vast expanses of denuded forests and lost habitats, affecting countless species of fauna and flora. Both legal and illegal mining are exerting a devastating impact. The use of toxic chemicals in mining processes severely contaminates the water and soil, jeopardizing the health of local communities and the unique biodiversity of the area. The lack of regulation and control in illegal mining exacerbates this issue, undermining efforts to preserve one of the planet's richest and most diverse ecosystems. Palm heart monoculture poses an additional serious threat to the biodiversity of the Ecuadorian Choco. The expansion of these plantations has led to the elimination of large tracts of native forests degrading natural habitats of countless animals and plants. This harmful agribusiness practice also directly reduces biological richness causing imbalances in the food chain and the loss of valuable natural resources for local communities that depend on forest goods for their livelihoods and well-being. Yet, in this tale of survival against all odds, glimmers of hope remain through conservation efforts involving local, national and international organizations joining forces with local communities in a collective effort to protect the Choco. 
by educating about the significance of preserving both the natural and cultural richness, promoting sustainable practices, and enhancing legislation and law enforcement, the goal is to address these threats and ensure the protection of this unparalleled paradise. The expansion of protected areas and the establishment of biological corridors offer an opportunity to restore the balance of nature and preserve the wonder of this magical corner of the world. The responsibility today lies in safeguarding the legacy of the Ecuadorian Choco for future generations, enabling them to marvel at its splendor and immerse themselves in the unique diversity that only such a place can offer. <laughs>